Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jamie Mallinder. Welcome to Jamie TV, where we do not pissy pants about. Rhino is the exciting new guitar software from Aurora DSP. It's available for Windows or for Mac, it's usable standalone or as a plugin inside of your digital audio workstation. Very soon it will also be available for the iOS platform in standalone mode or as a universal AUV3 app. But if you've seen the advertising, the graphics, the demos that other people have made for this software, you may have been expecting that intro music to sound a little bit more like this. When Rhino's bass guitar counterpart Mammoth first became available for the iOS platform, I made a demo of it by the power of YouTube magic, Link. Now the thing about Mammoth was I found that although it was presented as though it would excel at metal and thrash and death, and it certainly did, it was actually usable for a great variety of tones and lots of different kinds of music. And I found that Rhino is very much the same. So in this demo, I really want to highlight and feature that. Normally when you open up some guitar software what you see graphically is something that looks like an amplifier or maybe looks like an amp and a set of pedals and whilst that kind of skeuomorphism is nice ultimately it's not really necessary. Now with Rhino that's all been done away with which has allowed Aurora DSP to get preamping and pedals and EQ and cabinet, power amp stage, effects, output stage and much more besides all in one interface making everything accessible from one page which I think is pretty cool. It's a great idea. Let's take a closer look at it. As the version of Rhino that I'm currently using on my iPad and iPhone is a beta version, I'm going to start this tutorial by looking at the desktop version inside of Cubase Pro. But I can tell you that all the features and the sound are the same, it's just the layout that's different and I will show you that difference later. Now looking across the top of the software, up here is where we would access presets and use the saved presets, which we would save with the save button here. We have a night and day option kind of prefer the night option myself. We have an inbuilt tuner here which is always nice and over here we have a picture of a rhino's head. Now Rhino is divided into separate modules and all the main features of those modules are accessible from this screen but if you click on one of these icons on each module then it will open up and you will be able to access more features. Okay, let's take a look at that input section. I'm gonna click here so that it pops up and we can see all of the controls. I've switched over to a Telecaster type guitar on bridge pickup and a very clean sound because I think that'll be the best way to demonstrate this little section for you. So right at the beginning of your signal chain, you choose from one of these three options. Normal is an unaffected sound. Smooth will give you a top end roll off that's very useful for those very bright toppy instruments and hot will give you a 2K aggressive boost. Let me just close out my mic and demonstrate those for you. I 
found that hot setting really, really useful. It's like, to me, it sounds, straight away it sounds like a, a real amp on a clean setting. Input will give you a chance to attenuate the volume of a very loud instrument, for instance. Let's say if you've got one of those 24 fret active pickup guitars, um, you might be overloading the front end of Rhino, so you can just attenuate it back a little bit. And of course, you can also boost a quieter instrument. The gate will be best demonstrated with a dirty sound. So I'm just going to go and grab Modern Rhythm, which is one of the presets Rhino comes with. And I'll just hit a couple of aggressive chords. <laughs> Right, so you can hear that as soon as I mute the strings with the back of my hand, it cuts the sound out completely. If I just press here and switch the gate off, you'll hear that noise that is an inherent part of using a very dirty guitar sound. I'll just switch it back on and then pull it all the way down. All the way down in this position, the gate is all the way open, so effectively it's kind of off. If you drag it all the way up, it's all the way on, and if I hit the strings, I simply cannot make a guitar sound. Round about here, if I just put it here, you'll hear that with this particular guitar, it's cutting off too early. I found the thing to do is look for places in what you're gonna play where you're gonna have a sustained chord. And then hit that sustained chord. Let me just bring this down a little bit. What you don't want is the gate kicking in before that chord is complete. So here's an example of getting it slightly wrong, which I'm good at. Right, I don't want it to do that. So I would just pissy pants around with it until I find a nice balance. The attack is the speed at which the gate will kick in and the release is, well, how quickly it will be released. And down here we have a high pass filter, which is incredibly useful. When you play guitar, you don't really notice how much low end it has. It has kind of an unnecessary amount of flabby low end that we want to mix out when we're doing our final mix and we often don't notice it until that point. So this gives you a chance to roll some of that off and just get rid of it from the word go. The slope is how aggressively that filter will kick in. But this control, when I first got this, I was trying to move it and I couldn't, I was clicking on it and it wouldn't move. And then I realized what you have to do, you put your pointer over the slope and then just move the wheel on top of the mouse and select one of these three settings. The preamp module is where we really begin to shape our tone. And it's incredible how easy this module is to use considering the vast range of sounds available in it. We start out by selecting from one of four amp models across the top. Over here, we have a Rivera knucklehead, which is great for your cleans through to your crunchy sounds. Then we have a Cornford Roadhouse 30, which is a, a great tube overdrive sounding amp. Then we have a modded Mesa Roadster, which is fantastic for your really high gain stuff. And then we have a Victory Kraken, which is kind of like a a very present middle aggressive sounding amp and this one is wonderful for those really present leads a really aggressive screaming lead sound now to this side here we have our pedal board and think of this section as the front end of your amplifier now a quick word about these amps over here i wanted a clean sound and so i selected this amp and i played <laughs> And I thought, oh, I better switch off my Tube Screamer pedal. And I thought, it's a bit flat sounding and it's a bit quiet. And I didn't seem to be able to get the volume up. I just, I was really, really struggling to get the volume up without making the amp sound dirty. And then I noticed this bright button, which really, really helped. <laughs> It really had some sparkle and clarity. And then what I did, just a little tip, in order to get a very clean sound without making the amp any dirtier, I just came over here, dropped the limiter a little bit, and got exactly what I wanted. Just thought I'd point that out, because I did pissy pants around with that myself for a, 
a good old few minutes and then I realized that on each of the amps there is a button that you can press in so on the Cornford what we get is some extra gain and sustain when we switch in the boost pedal on the Mesa what we get is much more headroom for the gain and then on the Kraken what we have is a different voicing just for some extra tonal options when we press fire. Now looking at the pedal board, what you've got here is a tube screamer and you switch it on with this button here and then this is gonna be the volume of the pedal. And of course, you've then got the kind of controls you'd expect to see on a pedal of that type. I'll not dwell on that too long because most of you will know exactly what that kind of pedal does. Now the Brute pedal is a really interesting one. This apparently has been designed with eight string guitar players in mind, but it is very usable by other players too. The idea is that eight string players often struggle getting a clear sound in the mix. So what this gives you is a potential 23 dB boost and control of a bass and middle to help shape the tone of an eight string guitar. I don't have one, so I can't adequately demonstrate that to you, but I will come back to that in just a moment because if I show you this, the fuzz pedal, I love a fuzz pedal, and let's just turn up the volume of it here. All right, and add some gain to it. Now, as I add more fuzz, it becomes a little muddy, a little dirty. So if I kick in the Brute pedal and add some treble, cut some bass, this is a guess. Not a bad guess, it's starting to really, really brighten up that tone. I love that kind of sound. And then down at the bottom here, we have a compressor, which is just kind of your basic one knob compressor, but it works really, really well. We blend it into the mix here and decide how much compression here. And it's wonderful, it's really, really cool. And then all you need to do is decide, actually, let me just take these off. I don't need to press the buttons, there we go. Right, so this is the front end of the amp as it is at the moment. And then I can wind up the amount of drive here for the front end of the amp. And then what we can experiment with is the amount of that that's in the mix as well. And down here we have a regular EQ, bass, middle and treble, but with the added inclusion of a high pass and low pass filter. Rhino's EQ section is also a delight to work with. We simply switch it on up here and then we can decide which frequency band we want to work on. We can change the kind of slope that we're dealing with and we can adjust the gain or gain reduction for that particular frequency, uh, change the shape of the cue. So let's make a nice little mountain here and then we'll make it into a valley and then you can move it across the frequency ranges like this, looking for trouble spots. You can also get Rhino to tone match your guitar. All you need to do is you press get tone, play guitar, select match, and then select from one of three tonal options that it gives you. One of the big pluses in favor of Rhino in as far as it being a sensible purchase option is that it includes so much and you may find that that eliminates the necessity to buy any other software. For example, here in the modulation section, it includes a flanger, chorus and phaser and in the delay section here, or rather the time section, it includes delay and reverb, even as a convolution reverb and you can load in from a selection of IRs or choose to load in your own. Now, 
Most of you guitar players watching this will already be very familiar with how all these kinds of effects work, so I'm not going to give you a walkthrough of how these effects work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to the iPad beta version of this software because I'm very keen to show you just how good that sounds, and I'll give you a little demo of how these effects sound. <laughs> The power amp stage of the amp brings us more tweakable parameters we can pissy pants around with in search of that perfect guitar tone. Presence, resonance and hot are set to specific frequencies. Presence will give you a cut or boost at 8 kHz. Resonance will give you a cut or boost at 120 Hz and hot is set at 1 kHz. And these are really really effective. <laughs> Calm that tone down a little. Or give it an angry boost. This particular control I really find very, very useful. And then here we can select whether we want the power amp to be a flat sound, have more of a studio amp kind of characteristic about it, or sound more like a live amp, more like a tube power amp which would have uh, a little less in the middle and maybe a little more low and high. I'll just show you the difference between studio and live and flat. And then we have our IRs and you'll be pleased to know you can load in your IRs. We have four groups of IRs here and we can switch on or off each of these banks by just clicking on IR1 or IR2, etc. And then we can select from these groups of IRs or load in our own. So we can have up to four or as little as one, and we can select a group of IRs by clicking down here. So if I click on rhythm, that will select four IRs that Aurora think may very well be suitable for your rhythm sound and then we have a set for cleans and leads and a custom set and then of course you can grab hold of the microphone and drag it around this speaker sound that you just created so let me just see if I can demonstrate that while also playing
I think this is really, really, really effective. And I know that a lot of the iOS community in particular will be really excited about the fact that they can actually load in impulse responses. And finally, Rhino's output stage gives us a few controls to add that final little bit of gloss to our guitar tone. We have a multiband compressor that will help you control lower frequencies between 80 and 250 Hz. We have a limiter and we can adjust the release time on the limiter and we have a master volume out. I just wanted to very quickly visit Rhino inside of AUM so that I could go here and show you that there really are a vast amount of parameters exposed in this app for you to perhaps map a controller to. So if you were thinking about using Rhino in a live situation, you could perhaps use a controller to change presets, kick effects in and out, adjust your volume, etc, etc. Whatever it is that sizzles your particular sausage. To make the best use of the real estate available on an iPhone screen, the iPhone version has been modeled in a slightly different way. Although all of the same features are present, what we do is we just toggle down the icons on the right hand side of the screen to visit the various modules present inside the app. Just to prove a point about how much thought has gone into the iPhone version of this app, I'll just show you it here very quickly hosted inside of Cubasis 3 where you will see that everything is very much accessible and I have found it to be very very usable. I really like Rhino, I've thoroughly enjoyed using it, I found that the interface although there's a lot on it, it's very intuitive, it's very easy to find your way around, it all just makes sense, it sounds awesome and it's brilliantly designed. I will definitely be using it in my productions and I can't give a higher recommendation than that. And also I do hope that I've managed to show that it's a lot more versatile than it may first appear. Now I hope I've done a reasonable job of demonstrating this software to you. If you have any questions though, if I've missed anything, please comment below the video. I always reply and I always do my very best to help. If you'd like to support the channel in any way, then you'll find links under the video for my website, Patreon, merchandise, stuff like that. And if you did like the video, please do give me a thumb up and if you haven't done already, please subscribe. Until my next video, take care of yourselves and be good people, be kind, be good, make lots of music and don't piss your pants about. See you later.